All right, got an update for Project YFZ 450 2006 Special Edition. I got the top end here. I sent the cylinder out to Power Seal USA in Pennsylvania. My coworker does a lot of snowmobile rebuilds uh, and is very detail oriented. Said that this would be the go to guys to have this Nicosil redone on it. So, this is a stock bore. And if you watch the previous videos, you know that this is a Wasner forged piston. However, it is stock compression and it is stock bore. Um, so some people might ask, hey, why not go with a big bore kit and uh, why not put high compression in it? Uh, the purpose of this build is really endurance. I want, I want this to be able to live a long time. I don't want to have to rebuild again next year. I'd like to get a few years out of it and some good abuse. And I also don't want to worry about uh, having to put in race gas, high compression. You can get away with the bump in compression and, uh, you know, still maintain reliability. But you know what? I want to leave a lot of margin on there. I'm going to stick with pump gas on this. I'm not going to put in race gas. And I'm sticking with stock compression. It'll run fine. And the other th reason for keeping the bore small is that I kind of like the power band of the smaller bore. When you put a big bore kit on, you typically shift the torque down lower. Uh, all else the same, providing you have factory camshafts and things like that, factory valve size. You're going to basically just shift your power down and get some more bottom end grunt, which is fine. Uh, that's fine for some people, depending on what kind of trail riding or racing they're doing. Um, for me, I like the, the characteristics of the stock bore size. And like I said, stock compression is a reliability thing. Um, so getting the cylinder back, I'm pretty pleased overall with the finish of it, with the exception of the gasket surfaces here on the base. Uh, what they have to do to prep the cylinder is they sandblast it, and the sandblast leaves some pretty rough uh, finishes here where the base gasket goes. Um, I don't think it'll be an issue. I'm going to use a little bit of a gasket supplement on here to make sure that there's nothing seeping out. Like I said, I don't think it'll be an issue, but I'm just being overly cautious. Same thing with the top here, the sandblast surface. You could tell they were pretty gentle on the top here. Um, it's not quite as smooth as I'd like. Um, you might be able to see a couple little minor nicks or something. Really nothing significant there, but I'm also going to be using some of the uh, copper spray on the head gasket, which is... It's a debatable topic among engine builders. I've used it extensively in the past, and um, on Teardown, I looked at the gasket very closely, and I'm always satisfied with the outcome. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, the gasket manufacturers all tend to advise against it. Um, the gaskets do have a Viton coating built into the gasket. However, the, the copper coating is more to fill in little variations in the head surface. Like I said, the uh, little bit of pitting a little bit of extra texture to the where the cylinder head gasket goes so I will be doing that um, one thing I wanted to show here was this tool here is spring-loaded made out of nylon or Teflon I'm not sure the exact material but basically you put it into the bore this fits a variety of bore sizes you release it and what that does is this will square up your rings. When you put the ring into the cylinder, you want it to be completely square. If the ring is tilted, it will affect the gap. So this is just a really precision way. I mean, a lot of people will do is they'll put the ring in and then they'll push it down with the piston, but the piston is barrel shaped and it can rock all over the place. So it's not, it's not really a good way of trying to square it up. Um, the bigger the ring, the bigger the bore, the more sensitive it is to its location whether it's tilted or whatnot so this tool will allow me to get the ring nice and square in the cylinders that way I know exactly what the gap is and it is consistent now it's probably you might be splitting hairs a little bit I mean if you carefully kind of set it down I think you'll be all right but again this is a precision tool this is kind of I would almost argue more for engines with multiple cylinders so you're consistent from one to the next it's a consistency tool um, you really don't, it's not required by any means. If you're really careful or maybe even bother to take a couple measurements, you can get the rings nice and square in a single cylinder engine. You don't have to worry about it, but I have it. I use it on car engines that I do. And, uh, so I'm going to be using that. And that comes from RST or RTS tooling. RTS tooling, yep. 
And so that's going to be my project today, is going to be getting these rings checked. Uh, basically just set a feeler gauge down in there once the ring is set. And uh, the ring gaps are going to be kept on the small side for this one, again, because it's not an extreme build. Um, it's not all-out power, so I'd like to keep the rings fairly tight and try to minimize blow-by as much as possible. Um, something fairly close to the stock ring gaps are what I'm going to use. Um, so that is my update. I have the cylinder head. Uh, I should be hopefully getting that back next week. And I'm going to be doing another carb video. I have one right here that I just refurbished. And uh, I'm going to be doing another carb video about uh, some details, um, some jetting, and some more rebuild tips. Um, the carb video I have uh, previously um, is the most popular video by far. A lot of people want to know what the deal is, uh, if they have any carb issues, or if they want to rebuild them, or they can only run on chokes, so on and so forth. So, uh, so that's my update. I haven't done a video in a while. I wanted to give you guys the update. This has been a really slow-moving project. I haven't been in a big rush. I've had some other things I've been working on. But uh, this is going to be set up, and oh, one other thing here. Uh, let me grab. I did a previous video about wrist pins. I am going to be using the WPC treated, and again, this this is WPC treated. It's a company based out of Japan, and they do metal surface treatment on engines, uh, transmission parts, gears everything bearing anything that slides against something else so that's a wpc treated wrist pin um, i really i had some custom dlc wrist pins made however the wall thickness was a little bit too big and uh, the pin was too heavy so this is wpc i'm going to be using this um, a little bit worried about pin galling and pin wear piston wear but I think given the features of this piston and adding the squirter from the 07 and up engines, I'll be fine. Um, maybe I'll do a teardown next year and see how everything's faring in there. Because wrist pin uh, galling and wrist pin wear, in the, or pin bore wear in the pistons is a big concern in these engines. So, um, so yeah, that's my update for now. I appreciate you guys watching.